Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. This could be the end of the line for Starliner. Yet another issue has reared its ugly head, or rather it's an issue that simply refuses to go away, an issue that could, at least in theory, put the crew at risk. After all these years, after all the effort that's been made to tweak this vessel into a condition to where it's actually safe to carry passengers, can NASA actually think that Starliner will ever be safe for human passengers? And if it isn't, then why are we still continuing with this program? Isn't it time to finally pull the plug? All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon. Once again, welcome to another Angry Bulletin, a bulletin that I frankly did not want to do. I hope this is the last bulletin that I ever have to do about Starliner. That's probably a forlorn hope, but I really hope that I never have to do another news story about this spacecraft ever again. We all know that Starliner has really gone through the ringer. I mean, this spacecraft has been plagued by so many issues that I don't see how anybody reasonable over at NASA can conclude that it is a safe spacecraft to fly anymore. Now, let's be clear about one thing here. The current issues that Starliner has, this little helium leak, Old NASA, pre-Challenger NASA, or perhaps even pre-Columbia NASA would have launched it anyway. They just would have gone for it based on the risk criteria, based on just how likely was it that this was going to create some sort of serious disaster, loss of the crew, etc. And they probably would have just said go for it, especially given the the current circumstances. I mean, keep in mind, we are 100% reliant on Crew Dragon to get to the International Space Station right now. If anything happens, and yeah, it doesn't seem likely, Crew Dragon seems pretty bulletproof, but also keep in mind that the space shuttle had flown more times than Crew Dragon is currently flown before the Challenger disaster happened. So really, there was no reason to believe that the space shuttle was anything less than bulletproof proof until that fateful day in 1986. So if something does transpire with Crew Dragon, something serious that grounds the ship for a while, we're essentially going to have to turn the ISS over to Vladimir Putin. He's going to impose some very serious requirements if we want to make use of the Soyuz and getting up to the ISS again, and that almost certainly is going to involve ceasing and desisting with any sort of support for Ukraine in this ongoing conflict. And the West will almost certainly not cooperate with that. The United States, Biden, etc. will almost certainly not agree to any of the terms like that. And so Russia, if they want, can completely cut off access to the ISS and essentially turn it into a Russian space station. Based on those kinds of risks, once again, I think old NASA would have just said, go for it. But this is new NASA. This is post-Challenger and post-Columbia NASA. And I actually did a video not that long ago talking about NASA's current abundance of caution and how this might sabotage our efforts of ever returning to the moon again. It's kind of difficult to foresee a future where going to the moon is so routine and so risk-free that NASA is going to be comfortable with it. But all of these details aside, should NASA just launch Starliner? Is that what I'm suggesting right now? Are they just being ridiculously cautious with this spacecraft and they should just move forward and stop worrying about these things? Well, no. Given the history that this spacecraft has, given everything that's already gone wrong with it, 
it's actually a bit of a miracle that we haven't lost a crew on this ship already. It's only because of NASA's abundance of caution that we haven't lost a crew on it. And I think all of us should really be asking the question right now, can this spacecraft ever truly be safe? Up to now, these are the only crew members that have been allowed aboard Starliner. Oh my god, you actually put Snoopy at risk? Well, yes they did actually back in 2019 when we had every reason to believe that Starliner might actually enter service before Crew Dragon did. It was a bit of a race between the two of them. Well. This spacecraft took off in December of 2019, right at the time that I was beginning my channel, and it created some amazing content for me right off the bat. Not because it did well, but because it did horrifically. First of all, there was a significant software failure that led the spacecraft to misinterpret its trajectory and believe that it was on its way to the wrong orbit. It therefore used its engines and virtually all of its propellant trying to get into what it thought was the right orbit and in the process failed to dock with the ISS or even reach anything close to the correct trajectory. It orbited the Earth a few times, re-entered, landed safely, and it was generally thought that overall the test had gone fairly well, but the more NASA analyzed the flight, the more it became clear that lots of things had gone wrong. Not only had there been a problem with the launch and the trajectory that Starliner was taking right after the launch, during the re-entry, the spacecraft almost collided with its service module because of a timing issue. This caused NASA to almost lose the spacecraft twice. As a result, after the analysis, NASA identified no less than 80 corrective actions that needed to be taken by Boeing before they would let this spacecraft fly again. And Boeing did everything that was asked of it. They completely revamped the software system. There continued to be more issues software related that delayed the second flight again and again. And then finally, they put the spacecraft back on the pad and got ready for a second launch in 2021. And then there were valve issues in August of 2021. 13 of the propulsion system valves failed to open. That being the case, it would have caused the entire propulsion system on Starliner to break down if the spacecraft were actually launched. A pretty serious issue, and one that we still have not been able to fully identify as to why all of this happened. Boeing just replaced it with another service module with new valves and new thrusters. Starliner's comedy of errors continued until May 19th of 2022, and finally, the ship got off the ground, this time carrying Rosie the Rocketeer again in a blue Boeing flight suit, and it made it all the way to the International Space Station on May 22nd of 2022. However, there were issues with this flight as well. It was obvious. There was a 24-hour time period when neither Boeing nor NASA were responding to any sort of media-related questions. Although nothing was being made clear at the time as to what the problems might be, and very little was actually discussed until the spacecraft actually returned to Earth, there were actually a significant number of problems. Many of the ship's thrusters failed. Now, of course, redundancy kicked in and not enough thrusters failed to cause a real significant issue, but still, it's a bit disconcerting when your spacecraft's propulsion system isn't operating properly on what amounted to a maiden flight. The first flight really can't be called a maiden flight, given the fact that it never got anywhere near its destination. So, all of that being the case, it seemed that Boeing did a lot more work on the spacecraft because obviously there was no more launches for a couple of years after that, well, close to a couple of years anyway, and during that time, Boeing started to move forward towards another launch until it was determined 
behind the scenes, by the way, by an independent watchdog group that there were still quite a number of lingering problems. Problems that this group said needed to be addressed because the spacecraft was still not safe. It took some time before NASA and Boeing made any sort of public statement about the issue, and then, amazingly enough, they discovered a problem with the ship's wiring system. And an amazing coincidence that this happened right after an independent watchdog group calls you out on the whole thing, but they discovered that the entire wiring system and the materials that it was wrapped in were theoretically vulnerable to a fire which of course is one of the worst things that could possibly happen to a spacecraft. And so the entire spacecraft needed to be rewired, delaying things even further and making people really question whether or not this spacecraft was just fundamentally flawed at every conceivable level. And so here we are, another launch attempt, another problem. And by the way, Boeing knew about this helium leak prior to ULA discovering an oxygen leak in the Centaur 3 upper stage on the Atlas V rocket. So they knew about this issue and just regarded it as being a minor enough problem to allow a flight of a human-rated spacecraft. Keep in mind, this helium is used to drive the propellant through the thrusters in the doghouse, so to speak, where all the thrusters in the service module are housed. Is this sounding kind of familiar? Yeah, it sounds like that they still have a thruster problem. Now granted, redundancy will probably allow the spacecraft to safely dock with the ISS and for the crew to safely return. They need thrusters in both sides of the process in order to make sure that Starliner is appropriately oriented to dock to re-enter the atmosphere, the thrusters are pretty damn important, which of course is one of the reasons why they have so much redundancy built into them. But still, we're talking about a problem that will directly affect a system that had problems back in 2021. A system that should be completely fixed by now. There should be no problems with this thruster system anymore after they already had problems with it in the past and they had all this time to rectify these issues. And the fact that Boeing still hasn't been able to do this, the fact that they are still struggling with these problems even now, after four and a half years of work, well, I think it's time for NASA to pull the plug. I don't see how this spacecraft is ever going to be safe, is ever going to be fully functional, is ever going to be an appropriate spacecraft to risk our astronauts on board. Regardless of what NASA's current culture is, regardless of the potential problems of leaving things in the hands of just one space capsule until we have another solution, which by the way, there is absolutely Absolutely another solution that's currently being worked on right now and that is a human rated dream chaser spacecraft and so herein in my opinion lies the solution shut down Starliner get a 50% refund from Boeing because after all they were contracted to take astronauts up to the ISS at least six times and they're not going to be able to do it and use that money from that 50% refund to invest in the Dream Chaser. A human-rated Dream Chaser could come out as soon as 2026, especially if they had another billion dollars to sink into the project. I think that there's a great chance that they could have it done by then. And if they do, we could have a total solution to this problem and hopefully one that will not rely on a single spacecraft for access to orbit in the future. Once again, just my opinion, but honestly, can you disagree with it, especially now? I would like to thank the following folks, Dave R., Steve Meacham, and Richard Moses, all of them upgraded their memberships on Patreon to help me get to that 1% threshold. Thank you so much. And I am adding another exclusive video, this one about nuclear rockets this week for my Patreon folks. If you're interested in checking out this growing new channel, well, all the details are in the description. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Please like, 
Please subscribe, and as always, stay angry about space.